Good morning. Good to see all of you here. Welcome to worship on this first Sunday of 2015. Glad to see all of you here. Uh, and if you'll take your hymnal and join us in our call to worship, we're going to sing Majesty, Worship His Majesty, on page 176. 176. Sing along with us. Everybody, take your bulletins out and uh, let's look over some announcements that are printed there for us. Uh, the way of the cross food make deadline is the end of this month. Please remember that. And this evening at 6 o'clock is our monthly first Sunday night singing. So we hope you come back out and join us. It's always a good service together uh, as we come together and sing songs of praise and hear other specials as well. So please make your plans to be here for that. And also, please bring a, uh, your favorite food item to share, a uh, finger food item uh, to share with our social time following the singing. That's tonight at 6 o'clock. And a very sincere thank you to everybody who came out yesterday and helped uh, uh, take down the Christmas stuff uh, in here and throughout the church. Uh, your help was greatly appreciated. And so I uh, hope everybody has a blessed year in 2015. And uh, mark your calendar of several events there uh, coming up that have been printed for us. Uh, this week, the Finance Committee will meet on uh, Wednesday, January the 7th at 5 o'clock to finalize the budget for 2015. <laughs> and following that at 6 o'clock, uh, same night, we'll have our uh, Administrative Council meeting. Uh, which will be uh, uh, held to plan out events for this quarter that we are in now. And everybody's encouraged to attend. It's always good to be there, to know what's going on in the church. Uh, so we in invite you and encourage you to come out and attend that as well. And some other events later on in the month, uh, nursing home visitation will be on, the, on January the 12th at 7 o'clock at Atala, Atala Healthcare. And our movie night resumes on January the 18th at 5.30. So please mark your calendars uh, for those events there. And the December financial report is also there for your viewing. Does anybody have any other announcements uh, that need to be made today? All right. Uh, Joey, I did, uh, I got a text from Gary Campbell and he said that like like I said, if, if you usually do not come to the singing nights, uh, you're missing out on a great treat, let me tell you, because uh, we get the bunch from Halton here, and it just fills up the church almost, and uh, just have good voices, they have just good strong voices together singing. It's just wonderful to listen to. So uh, I invite you to come out and encourage you to come out to that tonight. All right. Um, if there are no other announcements, uh, we're going to move along to hymn 368. If you'll take your hymnal back out and th turn to page 368. We sang this on New Year's Eve as, as our New Year's Eve service song. 
And uh, I'll say it again. This is if our hope is not on uh, Jesus and His blood and righteousness for this coming year, then uh, we may not have a good year. So let's let's make sure our hope is always built on Jesus Christ. So let's sing about it. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verses. You'll join us in affirming our faith this morning with the Apostles' Creed, which is always is printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, if you'll take your hymnal back out again, turn to page 98. To God be the glory.
morning. My wife has been complaining, I mean praying for sunshine for about the last 10 days, and I'm glad to see that her prayers have worked today. Boy, it's just almost blinding how bright it is out there right now. And, uh, uh, I don't know about you, but I, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the gloomy rainy days, I guess when you get so many of them, they tend to bring us down a little bit, and it's uh, great to have the sunshine. Uh, what I was doing, man. Having the sunshine uh, coming down on us. Um, this morning, uh, I'm going to be reading from Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, for me, it's a very different chapter uh, from any others in the Bible. Uh, very special. Uh, has a lot of meaning to it. Uh, I'm going to uh, share the first three verses uh, at this time and share a little bit more a little bit later. But uh, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, starting in verse 1, says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word today. choir's anthem this morning is Jesus is Lord of all.
Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you all the way. And I want to just uh, may this sunshine remind us of your, of your loving and that you give us each and every day. Lord, I ask you to bless the time and offering. We are about to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another year, another year 
which means another opportunity to draw closer to you. Lord, I, I just ask for the strength and courage for each one of us that we would take advantage of that opportunity. Lord, I thank you for our church and I thank you for all that you do for us. For it is in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Good morning again. As you can see, God has blessed me with uh, at least a bit of healing in my knee and in my back. If you would have seen me earlier this week, you would have questioned that. I could barely get up and down out of the chair, but uh, doing much better now, uh, and I'm just thankful that, uh, that he's allowed the, the pain to go away, and I'm feeling much better today. First Sunday of the new year, typically hear a lot of talk of New Year's resolutions this time of year, but you're not going to hear any from me today. Uh, I don't know whether that fad or tradition is dying out or losing its uh, interest, but you don't hear a lot about that much anymore. Although you do see a lot of commercials on television, if you watch TV, uh, about health clubs and losing weight. A lot of people trying to strike a nerve there with people that are tired of being overweight, and, and I guess I would fall into that category, so it's kind of touched a nerve with me. <clears throat> but as I said in my prayer a minute ago, this day for me, the first day of the year comes as an opportunity. And I'm thankful for it. Thankful that I've been given another day, another Sunday, another week, another day that I can ask for forgiveness for where I've fallen short and take advantage of the opportunity for me uh, to do better, do better as a as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a pastor, as a Christian. See, none of us are perfect. We've all have room for improvement. So, I wanted to take uh, a few minutes this morning uh, to share with you a thought or two on the subject of faith. Our Sunday school lesson this morning was about the Lord's Prayer, prayer in general, and what Jesus, how Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. And prayer is a, is a great gift uh, and something we all need to take more advantage of. But I think right up there with prayer is the need for us to have faith. Uh, faith is something that I believe does not come easily. It's something that you have to work at. You have to want it. It's kind of like winning football games. You know, faith just doesn't fall out of the sky. It's something that, uh, that we experience after years of seeking after 
living the way Jesus wanted us to live. And I can't uh, uh, help but tell you that the definition of faith as it is here in the Bible has always kind of confounded me. I've never, it's hard to just wrap, your, wrap my mind around that. Now faith is being sure of what is hoped for and certain of what we do not see. And I, I tried for a really long time to just really understand exactly what that meant. And I just, to be honest with you, I just never got there. And this may sound ironic or silly, but I just have faith that God knows what faith is, and I just take his word for it. And I'm trying to, to understand it. I feel like I have faith. Uh, at times, I feel like my faith is stronger than others. But uh, overall, I feel like I have a strong faith in God. I, I believe that God loves me. I believe that God knows the number of hairs on my head. I believe God knows everything about me. And I believe God has a plan for my life as I've noticed over the last 52 years. There is no way that I could be where I am today, standing here in front of this microphone, if it weren't for God. And Him having a hand in my life. A few uh, verses of scripture here in chapter 11 I want to share with you about some of the ancients they talked about. The heroes of the Old Testament. Starting out there in verse 4 it says, By faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith he still speaks, even though he is dead. One of my favorite names in the Old Testament was Enoch. Verse 5, it says, By faith Enoch was taken from this life, so that he did not experience death. Now you may have heard me say lots of times before, God, you know, how cool would that be? How cool would that be to be in the company of Elijah and Enoch? Not to have to experience death. I mean, those guys are way up there on the uh, scale of faith. I wouldn't call it jealousy, but uh, it's certainly something that uh, I would have loved to have put my name on that list. Don't think I'm going to make it. He could not be found because God had taken him away. Or before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. How about that? Somebody who pleased God. I don't think that uh, Joe Dismick would fall into that category. At least not all the time. Maybe occasionally, maybe sometimes, maybe rarely. But Enoch was a guy who, who pleased God. And I would say he probably did it all the time. What a great way to be described. And without faith, is it, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Well, I think those are great words. Great word for us to follow today. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. You know what? You hear reports in the news how there are so many people who question the existence of God. 
A lot of different theories rolling around out there trying to deceive people. But Enoch was a man who had the utmost faith. And going on verse 7, it says, By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. Then it goes on to talk about Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. And I just try to think about that and just kind of envision if God told me to just pick up and move to the mountains of South America or to pick up and move to the Arctic in Alaska. Or God said, build you a boat and row out to an island in the middle of the South Pacific. Or move to the jungles of Africa. Now it wasn't that far extreme of where Abraham was told to go. But still, it was a strange land. He didn't know where he was going, didn't know what he would do. He just went because he had faith in God. And he went where God told him to go. That's just so hard to believe. And then we know the miracle of Abraham and Sarah. It says, by faith, Abraham, though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was unable to become a father because he considered himself faithful who had made the promise. Sarah and Abraham had a child, had Isaac. Then in verse 17, it says, By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. I think we probably all remember the story. An angel appeared to Abraham and said, Go and take your son and sacrifice him on an altar that you built for sacrificing to God. And he takes Isaac, and they go out there, and he ties him up, and he puts him on the wood. And he's ready to kill his son. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, even though we may joke around and say, gosh, I could, we could just kill our kids sometimes, when it comes right down to it, that's nothing that any of us could ever even consider doing. But Abraham had faith in God, had utmost faith in God, and he was ready to put the knife to Isaac. And then God stopped him. And we know he went and provided the, the ram that was stuck in the, in the thorns. And the story began. And then there was the faith of Isaac and Jacob. And on down to Jacob's son Joseph. It says, by faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. And then there was Moses. One of my favorite movies, The Ten Commandments, documents it well. I used to watch it every year around Easter time. It used to just thrill me to death to see that. But the faith of Moses left his position as a prince in Egypt, went off to be with his people, the slaves in bondage, and then went on to follow God's instruction by leading the people in the exodus through the Red Sea. What faith that must have taken. And the last point that I want to share with you there is, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. Man, how, how impressive that must have been. How shocking to see what the faith of these people had. 
didn't have to raise a sword, didn't have to shoot an arrow, didn't have to advance on the wall, just walked around it and prayed, and God destroyed the wall because of their faith. Now, I, I read about all these heroes, these ancients in the Bible that's talked about here. And, and it's just a great example for each one of us to follow. But then there's Satan. There's Satan sitting on our shoulder, whispering in our ears. He says, you're not as good as they are. You'll never live up to the way they live. You'll never have the faith that they have. Look at the world the way it's going today. That's just a story in a book. You know, we hear Satan whispering in our ears. Now, I firmly believe that I don't think I'll ever live up to being as good as Enoch was. I'll probably never live up to being as good as any of these people that I just read about. But the thing about it is, I really don't have to. Because I'm not Enoch. And I'm not Abraham. I'm not Joseph. Certainly not Moses. I'm Joe Disney. And I can only be as good as I can be. And with all my faults and all my failures and all my shortcomings, God understands that. And I think sometimes that we get discouraged and we get frustrated because we don't live up to expectations. Either from our parents, from our peers, and sometimes even our congregation. And don't think for a minute that I blame you, because I think if you know anything about me, you know that I'm pretty hard on myself. But still, I love God. And I want to please Him. Just like each one of these Stories we just read about in the Bible. All of those people wanted to please God. And I want to please God. Because of what he's done for me. I think the faith that I hold in my heart. I struggle with the whole worry versus faith thing. I think I worry a lot less than I used to. And I think that's because in the balances, my faith is kind of outweighing the worry in my life the way it is today. I used to worry all the time. I, uh, I shared with them in Sunday school this morning how when I was younger, I used to lay awake in bed until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, stare at the ceiling, couldn't sleep. I think it was because I worried a lot. And I carried that with me throughout my life and but I think the that faith has strengthened me and taken a lot of the worry away I can't I'm not going to say it, it's taken all away because it hasn't I still find myself slipping back into the world of worry a little bit but when I realize that I'm doing that I think about all the good things that God has done for me I think about the stories that I just read here in Hebrews chapter 11, how God has done so many good things for so many people over this world. And when you start thinking about that, it's hard to imagine how you could worry at all. Because is there anything that God has said that he would do that he didn't do? He's kept his word in every possible way. He told us through his prophets in the Old Testament 
that he would send the Son, a Savior, to die for our sins. And he did that. I can't imagine, I can't imagine how God felt that day when Jesus was nailed to that cross and breathed his last. How God must have grieved. And it was all done for us. God has been faithful in every way. I think of all the things that I have asked for, all the things that I needed. God has always been faithful to take care of me and provide me everything that I've ever needed and most of the things that I've wanted. If God has been so faithful to me, shouldn't I return that gift and that favor by being faithful to him? I think the answer is yes. It's not, uh, it's not an obligation or a Or something that that I regret having to do. Being faithful to God and giving back to Him is something that I do joyfully. May not act like it all the time. You know, sometimes I wish I uh, wish I could just go around smiling and being happy all the time, just spreading joy like a lot of people can. But I don't regret one minute of, of anything that I do for God. He has been so faithful to me and to my family. We were talking about prayer this morning and uh, how I prayed as an 11-year-old for a, for a wife that would love me and we'd set up a household and have a family. Also shared this morning how I got really frustrated because God wasn't listening and he wasn't answering my prayer the way I wanted to answer when I wanted to answer but you know what? It took him almost 25 years, but God answered that prayer just exactly the way that I prayed. I said, God, send me somebody that would love me as much as I loved her. And boom, there comes Mary G. It took him a while, but he was faithful in answering my prayer. From 1973. Finally got around to answering it in 1998. See, I remember. Yeah, God doesn't always answer it in our time frame, but he is faithful to answer. Sometimes the answers are no. And you know, the... the the prayers that were answered no in my lifetime. I look back now and it was for my own good. God knew what was best for me. He has always been faithful to love me and to care for me and to do what's best for me. I just feel like it's my responsibility to repay him for what he's done for me. To be faithful to love him, and to try to please him. And I am just thankful that I was able to see 2015. It's an opportunity for me and for each one of us to take this new year, to take this new day, to take this new week that's coming up, and to... Show our faithfulness to God. There's a million different ways that we can do it. And I'm not going to go into all of those this morning. That's something for each one of us to decide. How can we show, how can we display our faithfulness to God? If you're not sure, just close your eyes and ask 
God, how can I show my faithfulness to you? Believe me, the opportunities will present themselves. So in Sunday school this morning, we talked about prayer. And in church today, we talked about faith. Faith is not something you can go to a class and learn more about, I don't think. It's something you just have to experience through your relationship with God. And that relationship with God comes through a relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. That's the way that we get to God. It's through that relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to take it for granted that we have all made that decision. And we all have that relationship with Jesus. But if you don't, now is a time to solidify that relationship. Now is a time of invitation where we can make those choices, where we can make those decisions. And let's just say that we made that decision to follow Jesus years ago. So now is as good a time as ever to, to recommit to following Jesus in a more personal way in 2015. Wherever you are in that relationship, he's here to meet us today. So as the musicians come, I ask you to uh, just consider your faith and what you can do to improve it. Turn to page 348 as we close our service out today, softly and tenderly. 348, and as you're able, please stand when you find the page.